are here. Welcome. Thanks for coming to the session. There's a jam-packed um, hour here with a lot of good sessions, so I appreciate you coming. Uh, the bit.ly link is PB for Project Browser, FLDC for Florida Drupal Camp, and then 23 for the year. So if you, down, if you get to that link, you'll get all my slides. Most importantly, you'll get all the links to all the issues and all the ways that you can contribute. So definitely go to PB FLDC 23. All right. All right, so I'm Leslie Glenn, Manager of Client Success at Redfin Solutions. I co-lead the Project Browser Initiative uh, with Chris Wells. And I was on the DA board for a couple of years. Uh, and there's my, the ways you can get in touch with me. All right, so what is the Project Browser Strategic Initiative? Is everybody familiar with it? Everybody heard of it? Obviously, this morning they mentioned it. But really, it was announced by Dries at DrupalCon North America in 21. And it, really, the thing was, the Project Browser makes it easy for site builders to find and install modules. That's the, the basic goal. He then, in 22 at DrupalCon Portland, said uh, the goal is to want to be able to discover great modules from within Drupal without having to go out to Drupal.org and install those modules within the Project Browser with a click of a button. So that was our charge. That's what we are aiming to do. So basically, you know, the first thing we did was we asked site builders, how do you find modules? Can you hear me in the back, by the way? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll try to speak. If, if you can't hear me, just raise your hand, then I'll speak louder. I know it's um, hard. So basically, people have started going to, you know, this is how we used to do it. You go to Drupal.org, you find that beautiful uh, form to fill in. We've had listening sessions with a bunch of different um, t people in our target audience. Nobody knows how to use that. They think they have to fill in every single one of those criteria. Then they hit enter and they get absolutely no results. Not helpful. So then they go and do Google searches, et cetera. So we're trying to make this easier for people to go and um, you know, filter on different criteria less than that to get to find modules to add functionality to their website. So there's a strategic initiative page. There's a link in here. Again, download the using the bit.ly link download. I'm not going to go to that page, but it explains really what the mission is of this uh, strategic initiative. So what problems are we trying to solve? Um, the Drupal community has made it really easy to install a Drupal site. So people that are new to Drupal can install a Drupal site. But then what? What do they do next? They want to add some functionality. How do they do that? And that's what you know, we're trying to help them here. It's like going in a grocery store and you see all those cereal boxes. How do you narrow down to which cereal box would actually you know, satisfy your requirements at, the, you know, at that time? Right now, there are 49,741 modules. Um, that's 500 more than the last time I gave this presentation, which was only a couple months ago. So modules keep getting at it. So how do we help people narrow down their search? Um, the initial goal of our MB MVP was to be able to browse for modules that are compatible with the, the version of your Drupal site. So if you're running a Drupal 9 site, we only want to bring in modules that are compatible with Drupal 9. And that's a big barrier. Oh, oh what is that? That is mine, but I'm not. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't even touching the thing. All right. Um, so, compatible with your, uh, provide instructions for downloading and installing the modules, filter by category, and the initial thing was to create a contrib module. So those were our initial goals. Okay. Whew. All right. So. We have a contrib module. Um, there's a button on the, on the contrib module. If you just go to Drupal.org project and then go to project browser, which is the contrib module, there's a little button right there, try it now. That allows you to use Gitpod to spin up, very easily to spin up a version of the project browser. Um, sorry? The link for this? On screen. Oh. The link for this is um, bit.ly pb FLDC 23. Gotcha. And I, I can, I'll repeat that at the end again as well. So basically you want to spin up a Gitpod instance. This is what happens with Gitpod, Drupalpod, if you've used that before. <coughs> and in the top right you're going to see this site, Welcome to, to Gitpod. 
you have to click on the expand button in the top right um, to be able to get the full site. One caveat with using Gitpod, so this is where we recommend people who just want to look at the project browser and give us feedback, they go there. Um, it does not include the automatic updates. So recently we've expanded from our MVP to, to allow the people to go in there and actually say install this module and it goes through the whole composer in the background to actually install the module on your site. You can't get to that using Gitpod. So Gitpod will allow you the try it now button, spin up a site, but it doesn't include the automatic updates. And I'll show you how to get to that if you want to test that part. You have to do it in a different way. So basically you log in with admin admin, you go under extend, we have a new link called browse modules. So that's how you actually go to the project browser. All right, so this is your first look at the project browser. In the black, and I know you can't read this, that's why I gave you the bit.ly link. These are really just meant for, you know, illustrations. So I'm not expecting you to read anything on here, but in general, we have, um, <clears throat> this is pulling information from Drupal.org. Doesn't pull it daily, it's not a real-time sync, so if you add a new module and make a change to a module, you might not see it here until we resync the data here. It will eventually be a, a real-time sync. But for now, we have, the, the modules that are shown are displayed are things that are maintained, they have security coverage, and they match the version of Drupal that you're in. So those are our three basic default criteria for displaying things on the module. They're displayed by most popular first, so the, one, the ones you see at the top here are the ones that have the most downloads. Yeah, and there's also advanced filtering for those of you who are not in our target audience that might want to look at, you know, dev, dev versions or something like that. You can get to that. It's just not the default. Okay, so what have we accomplished? I'm not going to read all of these, uh, but I will go through um, what we've done. We've made a lot of great progress so far, and it's only because of all the people in the community that have helped us out. So these are the, some of the things. We had listening sessions. Uh, we decided on using Svelte.js. Uh, like I said, we can install using Composer, et cetera. I'm going to show you most of these. So sources, by default, what the project browser returns is modules in the contrib space. So contrib modules are brought back. But as you can see, we have up here Drupal Core. So there's the ability to create your own sources. Drupal Core might be one source, but you might be an organization, a university that only allows people to download a specific set of modules, you can create your own source and say this is the source that they can use versus, you know, all modules that would fit into um, your default criteria. And then we have card views, we have list views. You can see there's categories on the left and I'll talk about all of those different things, but this is what we call the project browser. So in order to get you different sources, basically you just go to the configura configure link from the module and then you just, <clears throat> this one says Drupal Core, and you just enable that. It's disabled by default, so you're only seeing Contrib. But if you want to get the core modules, you can do that. Why would you want to do that? Say you're looking for Layout Builder, and somebody hears about Layout Builder, and they say, wait a minute, I browse, and I don't see Layout Builder. That's because it's not a Contrib module. It's a core module, so they would have to have core turned on to be able to see those. All right, then the automated, automated updates initiative. Um, allows us to change from just initially, we just had this, the set view commands, it'll pop up a modal and it would give you all the composer commands. You'd have to go to your terminal and run those composer commands. Now we have it so that you can just click the button that says add and install. And it installs this module in the background using composer for you. And it gives you all the different commands as it goes. Um, so, just so you know, this, this runs on a test site behind the scenes. So the composer commands are run against a, a staged version of this site. If, the, if it correctly works and it correctly installs it, it'll then go and install it on your actual Drupal site. So it's not gonna break your site. It's gonna do it you know, in the background, try to install it. If it's successful, then it goes and actually updates it, okay? So you'll see some commands in here. One thing we need people to do 
is to install this so they can run the automatic updates and check the messages. The messages are very technical, so we want people to go through and say, how can we fix those messages that come out as this is going so that people in our target audience, pe people new to Drupal and site builders will understand what those commands are telling them as it goes through this automatic installation process. So that is definitely something we ha need help with. All right, um, so by default, automatic install is not turned on. There might be companies who say, I don't want people installing modules on their own. So you can turn that off just by, again, in configuration, you just check off the thing that says allow installing via the UI. So that's off by default. Uh, there is an issue with symlinks, so that's why Git pod cannot um, do the automatic installs. So you might see an error message that says unable to download via the UI. That's, that, that's the reason. We, under, we know that, they're working on it, but just in case you run into that. All right, so <clears throat> this automatic install package manager also looks at defaults, uh, you know, what's required. So in order to install Path Auto, you need to install token. It automatically does that for you. The only thing you have to do is after this says installed, that one's not gonna necessarily say installed. You need to do a refresh right now until they fix this. You need to just refresh your page and then they'll both show as installed. But it does go and look at what's, what dependent modules are there and it installs those for you as well in the background. So isn't this cool? It does all this for you. No longer do you have to open up a terminal window, know what Composer is. You know, so for our target, target audiences, you know, site builders and people that are relatively new, this is a huge game changer for them and for Drupal. So what are we currently working on? Oh, a lot of things. Uh, updating the content. The project browser is only as good as the content that we display. So if somebody goes to project browser and say, oh, this is a cool interface, but information is not helpful, it's not going to be a win for project browser. So first impressions are very important. We want to make sure that when the project browser is released, that the content on Drupal.org, content meaning what, what's in the module pages, is, is, um, is really good. We're working on the project detail pages and a bunch of other things here, which I'm going to talk about all of these. The last thing down there, getting module maintainers involved. How many, any maintainers in the room? Perfect. So we need to, we need to, I need to interface with some module maintainers and see how we can get the maintainer community more involved in helping with this initiative. Because really it's the content that's on Drupal.org that's going to be the success um, of the project. So. How can you contribute? Really easy way to get involved. As Amy June said, anybody in this room can, can everybody in this room can contribute. There's something for everybody. Something as simple as adding a logo. So there's a meta issue for creating logos. There's, just, there's um, child issues for each one of the Modules that need logos. Now, again, we need maintainers to say, hey, I don't have anybody on my team to create a logo. Can you have somebody in the community create a logo for us? We'll add them to this issue. We've already had probably 50 logos created by members of the community. And basically, they, we gave the, give them the specs, what would they need. I think, it's, I think it's on my next screen, actually. 512 by 512 dimensions. Um, you know, and, and it has to be less than 10K, so there's certain things, but that's in the child issue that tells you what you need to do. You can create a logo. You can also just go and review logos that people have created. Does it meet the specs, you know? Uh, and then you just move it to reviewed and tested by the community. Once it gets to the point that it's released, you know, um, released and tested by the community, then I have to get the maintainers involved because they have to go and actually add, and this is a little bit of a change, it used to be that um, we thought we would add it at the fr as the first image on the project page on Drupal.org. That's what we've been telling people. That has now changed. And because the Drupal code is now um, hosted on GitLab, they actually want the maintainers to, to add this logo.png file to the root directory of their code base. 
and that's where it's going to pull the low low from for those cards that I showed you in the project browser it's going to pull it from there as opposed to pulling it from the first image okay Chris that makes sense great another one if, if you're not a designer and you're not really into making logos create short technical descriptions remember that little card that I had it's up there that little description there, 255 characters or less, key being non-technical. Anybody that comes here will understand in a quick snapshot what that module does. I'm saying module is project browser. Module is a type of project. We're starting with just modules to start. Um, so this is just, again, there'll be a child issue for every module that needs um, a, a short description created. And we want to start with the most popular modules. So we don't want to, you know, spend, spend our time right now doing the modules that have, you know, just a couple of installs. We want to start with the most popular ones and work from there. Because those are the ones that people will see at the beginning of the first pages of the project browser. All right, so we can have, we site builders can help here. Anybody in this room can review it. Do I understand what this module does? These are easy wins. So you get a contribution credit for this. So. Anybody that you know on your team that can help with something like this, just say, hey, people are very intimidated by when you say the word contribution, they think it's this really scary. I, I was there, I thought the same thing. I went to a couple of Drupal cons and I just sat there and I never contributed anything. But this is an easy one for people to just get their feet wet contributing and figure out, wow, this isn't all that difficult, I can do this. Creating short descriptions or reviewing people's short descriptions is an easy win. Now, where do you put the short description module maintainers? You're going to put it, here's the, the big long description. You're going to add it to the summary field. The summary field isn't currently used on the Drupal.org project pages, so you're just going to put the short description there. Okay? So again, once the child issue gets completed and reviewed by the community, we'll move that issue into the maintainers queue for them to um, do this with. Go ahead. Below the summary, it says leave blank to use trim value of full text. Will that work for Project Browser? It does right now. The problem is the majority of the descriptions, Aren't the first useful. 255 yeah. characters, are not useful and they're definitely technical. Yeah. So that's why we want to make sure that we have the summaries there. Yeah, if you go and test Project Browser, you'll see the little ellipsis at the end. Yeah. And that's why. It's because it's pulling from Drupal.org and we haven't yet. We don't have enough summaries sure. written yet to, uh, to cover all the modules. There's 47,000 modules. How many think there's a lot of contribution that can be done here? <laughs> of course, well, we're just going to try and do the first couple hundred to start. Where do you begin? Okay, just find any issue, uh, whether it's a logo or the descriptions that needs work. Move it to needs review. Somebody else reviews it, and then it gets reviewed and tested, and then move to the maintainer. All right, something else you can help with is we're visiting the categories. So right now in Drupal.org, there are 55 categories for you to filter by. So I am a new site builder. I want to go find something that has to do with, I don't know, um, event management or something like that. Where the heck do I go with all these categories? So we've narrowed that down to 19 categories. Actually, there's been a subgroup that's been working on these. So really what we want to know, both from maintainers and from the rest of the target audience is the name of the, the term that we're using, so those 19 terms, content, display, developer experience, whatever it might be, and then the scope of what, that, what would fit into that category. So a project in this category will do whatever is listed here. We need feedback from people. Is this non-technical enough? Do you understand? Are we missing any? You know, so as a module maintainer, we, we, I've sent it probably to 30 or 40 maintainers so far. Take each one of your modules, take each one of these categories, say which one of your modules fits and why you decided it fit there, and then tell us if it, if it doesn't fit into any of these, what else do you think we need? So definitely need feedback from both maintainers and just from regular community members on um, you know, how we can do that. So there's an issue for that. And then we go to the project detail pages. So this is when you click on the little card that has the image and the short description. You, somebody that's looking to maybe use this module wants to find other information. You know, what's next? What else can I, what else do I need? 
This is a project, this is a page on Drupal.org. This is the detail page. It goes on and on and on. Amy June created a template, which we need to talk about. You know, should we, should we add sections in a certain way to this? It's just a description field, just a WYSIWYG field. How do we make that more consistent so that the project pages are a little bit more consistent? We're not going to be able to update all the project pages. Obviously, there's way too many. But maybe for new projects that get added, maybe we use a template. I have people use a template to try and add a little more consistency to how these are presented. But the key thing is, for the detail page, um, so right now, just I just want to explain this to you. When you click on the little card and it goes to what looks like a detail page, there was no thought that went into this. This is just a stub just to prove that we could go out to Drupal.org and get this information. So don't think of that and say, oh, no, I don't like where these things are or a different order. That's not the intention of that page. It's just, it was just for the plumbing, just to make sure that we could actually make that happen. There is an issue which is listed here. Basically, it says, based on feedback from the community, these are the things that we think, the order that we think things should be on that page. But we haven't talked to enough people to really know. So you, as somebody who's going to use Project Browser, if you go to the detail page, what is most important for you to see first? And what information is not important for you at all? Like, do you, are you really interested in who maintains the project? Me, as a more experienced person, might be. You know, I might say, you know, Joe Smith created this module. I know they do great work. It's going to be, you know, a good module, and I should look further into it. But for somebody new to Drupal, is that information really relevant? Or should it be further down on the page? You know, something they can get to, but maybe not, we don't focus on. So we need community input on this. The, com the Site Builders Subcommittee for Project Browser meets on Thursdays at 4 p.m. Eastern. We had one this past week. Typically, those meetings are asynchronous on Slack, just threads, and you can go in and just add information to the threads. But we made a lot of good progress on categories by having Zoom calls, a couple of weeks worth of Zoom calls, so we're going to do the same thing with the project detail. So, so on Tuesday, we'll have another, you know, um, Zoom call. So anybody, everybody's welcome to join that. Or just get feedback from whoever you know and, uh, you know, add it to the threads on that Slack channel. Here's an example of something that the first cut it at what we might use. So you have the logo, the short description, etc the releases, and then down the bottom you have, right now it's a slideshow. We, we need to talk about accessibility there and how we present, because the, the, the listening sessions we had with the community, basically they said, what we really need is how does this module work? We need some visual, how does it work? So I think that belongs way further up on the page, but that's just my personal opinion. You know, as people in the community, they're gonna use this, what do you think? All the, where all this information resides. Is that sidebar too cluttered? Do we really care about, you know, and I don't want to pick on maintainers. Well, without the maintainers, we wouldn't have Drupal. So the maintainers are critical. But should we just move that down underneath? Or the whole layout is what we're working on. So think about how you might contribute to that. Uh, this is just an example of, I talked about the API, just so you understand how it works. You know, the names and the descriptions, all that gets into Drupal.org, and then that gets fed in via an API to the project browser. Right now it's coming from Drupal 7, because Drupal.org is still on Drupal 7. They're getting close to having a Drupal 9 version of that. Once we get that, then it will be a real-time sync. So right now, we need to take an action to say, okay, sync Drupal.org up with project browser, but that will be a real-time once we get the the Drupal.9 endpoint ready. And the Drupal Association is working very hard on that. All right, I don't know how many front end people we have in the room, but there's a lot that front end people can do to contribute as well. Um, on the project browser page, everything between the header and the footer is all presented with Svelte.js. I'm not an expert, I'm not as technical as some, um, but really the idea was to get a modern front end framework into core because we're going to have to get this in the core. Um, it is compiled code. It's not version specific, so you don't have to worry about what version of React or something you're running. Uh, Svelte is pre-compiled. So that's one thing you can help with is Svelte. Uh, you can check designs against the Drupal design system. We have some people already working on that, but anybody who wants to help out. Um, 
there's a proposal to make the felt side more themable. So that's something we definitely need help with. Accessibility, of course. And then there's a meta issue for UX improvements. So those are all ideas of ways that folks can help out if you're more front end uh, focused. If you're DevOps, if you're DevOps focused, or you have people on your team that are DevOps, um, converting from Git Drupal CI to GitLab CI is another, uh, another thing we're working on, and there's a link up there. Again, I'm not a DevOps, a DevOps expert, but this is definitely something that we need help with. All right, so what are our goals lo looking forward? Right now, I told you that Project Browser is a contrib module. We just released beta 4 this week, actually. Um, so we need help testing that. But we want to get it in core. There's a question of, can we get it into Drupal 10? I think Drupal 10.1 is coming out maybe in 90 days. So can we do enough in 90 days to get something in core? Don't know. We have a lot of work to do, especially on the content side. Um, so that's something we're looking at. Adding an ecosystem filter. Um, I'm going to talk about ecosystems in a minute, but adding an ecosystem. I want to, I've installed Drupal. I now want to add event management. So I want to add a function to it. You know, what are all the, I'm sorry, that's actually for recipes. So let's go to ecosystem. I want to add uh, commerce. There's a lot of things that are related to commerce. So how do I bring in all those related modules or whichever ones that I might want to use. Recipes and distributions and issue, that's the one I want to bring in an event management system. And then do we, we know at, at some point we want to install themes. Right now we're st strictly doing modules. Um, and then there's an idea of, you know, how I went through automatic updates and I said it's now installed. What happens once it's installed? I'm a brand new user. Great. I installed the module. Where do I go next? Do I go to the configuration page? You know, what are the next steps? So maybe have a modal pop up to give that target audience the next steps. So that's something that we're thinking about doing as well. All right, this is talking about the ecosystem. So this is Commerce Core. And there's all these different commerce add to cart link, commerce, you know, shipping, all these things. In Drupal.org right now, you can say when you create a, a module, what ecosystem it belongs to. So this is another way for us to, you know, I said we could present contrib modules, we can present core modules, maybe we want to present ecosystems. So bring me back everything that belongs to Drupal Commerce and show me all those modules so that I can say, oh, I'm doing shipping, I'm doing freight, I'm doing this, and pick those, rather than having to do a search for each one of those independently, like give you the whole block of things. For the recipes and distributions, this is a separate initiative. Initially, uh, Project Browser, we talked about something called use cases. It kind of grew into this other initiative. Use cases meaning what functionality do they want to add? I created a website. You know, uh, WordPress, other things, you know, you have these different options, what I want to add. So this is where something like event management might come in. Instead of searching for for 10 modules that you really need to build an event management system, you'll say, you'd filter and say, okay, I want to bring in event management. It would bring in those 10 modules all together for you, but not only that, it would bring in the configuration as well. So rather than individually bringing modules in, recipes distribution should bring in a set of modules to help you perform a certain function that you're trying to add. All right, Whew, that was fast, right? You can see there's a lot to contribute. Does anybody, everybody in here see maybe how they might be able to contribute? Was there something for everybody probably, I would guess? All right, I don't know how many of you are gonna stick around for tomorrow, but we definitely are having a contribution event tomorrow. It's from, the original slide said one to four, or the original website said one to four, it now says one to five. So it's either one to four or one to five, whichever website page you wanna read. Uh, but you're welcome to join. Um, you can just test it using Gitpod and just give us your feedback. Um, you can look at the categories or the detail pages, add logos, add short descriptions, um, you know, look at our automatic updates and see if the messages are helpful to you. But everybody is welcome. 
this work for design. Like Amy June said, this is an initiative that is perfect for anybody that wants to just get started in contributing, or for people who have contributed for years and years. There's, there's stuff for you to do as well. So whatever thing you're in, documentation people, obviously site builders, but beginners, people who are brand new to Drupal. I don't know how many are at this camp, but quite often I have people that are brand new to Drupal, and they're great for coming in and just looking at something and saying, wow, this is my feedback. So, why should you contribute to Project Browser? Um, there are many, many reasons why you should contribute, but some of the things I thought about, um, so I've been teaching Drupal or whatever for 11 years or so. The hardest thing people have is I install Drupal and I have no idea what to do. So hopefully, hopefully this gets, gets Drupal over that hurdle and gets more people to think about Drupal versus some of the other CMSs that are out there. So we're hoping Project Browser um, helps them. The terminal is hard. How many, when they first get in Drupal, somebody said, oh, you've got to, do the ter you've got to use the terminal. You need to use Composer. How many people just said, oh, nope, nope, that's way too much for me, you know? Um, so th this eliminates a lot of those obstacles. Um, by having the automatic update, updates being done, installing it without going to the terminal, that hopefully will help a lot of people. Um, when I first heard Dries talk about this in 2021, I think it was the first time he spoke at DrupalCon about it, I'm there, wow, I've helped so many people learn Drupal um, by trainings and all that kind of stuff. This is a great initiative, and that's how I became involved. Um, I honestly, when I first started Drupal, didn't know a single person. I started con just contributing, meeting people, and it's a great way to learn people in the community that can help you with other things. So don't think of contribution as just you giving back to Drupal. Think of it as Drupal also giving back to you in terms of networking, in terms of your knowledge um, that you can then share with other people. So um, the other thing somebody mentioned this morning is how cool is it for everybody that installs Drupal to actually go use Project Browser? And you can say, wow, I had a part in building that. Right? That's pretty exciting. I forget what talk I was at this morning where, where somebody said that. Uh, just simple things like adding consistency across the project pages. That helps everybody that goes and looks for modules. It doesn't just help the target audience. And there's new tools like Svelte. People are excited to, to learn Svelte and to, to use Svelte. So that's a good opportunity. Or the same with the GitLab CI. So the bit.ly right here, <clears throat> PB for Project Browser Contributions, that gives you a whole list of the things that I talked about today with all the issue numbers for how you might want to go and contribute. So share that with your colleagues or with anybody that's looking to get into Project Browser. If you can't be here tomorrow, um, you, know, you can contribute there at any point in time. How can you join the initiative? So, if you have questions or whatever, on Drupal Slack, there's a project dash browsers um, channel. Join that. As I said, we have a sub site builder subcommittee, which is more than non technical end user looking at content, looking at user experience, that kind of stuff. We meet on Thursdays at 4 p.m. in the Slack channel. There's also a much more technical meeting on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Eastern in the same Slack channel. The, those are threads where you just go in at any time. You don't have to be here at these specific times, but you can go in within the next 24 hours, read the threads, give your feedback. Um, so join those. Uh, you can work on the issues that are in that PB Contribute. Uh, Chris Wells and I are the two leads for the, for the initiative, so reach out to either one of us, at Chris from Redfin or at Leslie G. Um, would love to have you contribute beyond just tomorrow. Uh, so reach out to us. Even little contributions, creating one logo, that's a huge win. So don't feel like you have to have this great amount of time. You know, an hour or two here or there is, is just as good as somebody who wants to spend 10 hours a week. A lot of people doing an hour or two gets a lot of work done. So don't feel like we're asking you for a huge amount of time. There's some great resources on this slide. Um, one that I want to point out is this PB handbook. Uh, there's a link to it here, but that basically tells you 
I told you about uh, Gitpod, how you can spin up a simple site without the automatic installation. That gives you the steps on DDEV for how to install Project Browser plus Beta 4 with the automatic installs. So that this handbook gives you, gives you a link to that. It also gives information for maintainers on what you have to do to bring your modules up to speed for Project Browser, like adding to the summary field for the description and adding that logo to that logo.png. Um, so that's a good one. And then the contribution opportunities, I already told you that. So those are all good links. And that's all I have. Whew. Is that fast or what? Um, thank goodness I'm from Boston. We talk fast. <laughs> Who has questions? Anything on what you can contribute to? Go ahead. Does does the cart takes you to the module page? I'm sorry. The the, the cart when 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 I get into the results for the for for the model I'm looking for. Does it take you to the module page or? Mothers won't have the, their, their own page. Right, so the question is, just to repeat for the video, um, when you click on the card, does it bring you to the module page? Yeah. Okay, so originally we were just going to link out to Drupal.org um, to the page that was our MVP, and we accomplished that, obviously. But the thought was, we don't want to send people outside of the project browser. We want to keep them in the project browser. So that's why we're working on creating that detailed page within the project browser. But that's a very good question. So currently, it links to that stub page that I said, which is just some information from Drupal.org. I think it displays the body field there, um, but not everything from Drupal.org. So that is what we're working on improving, that, that detail page. We also have to improve on, right now you have to click on the name of the module to get to the detail page. You should also be able to click on the, the image, the module logo to get to the, the detail page. Okay. Very, very good question though. Anybody else have questions? Just, just building on that. I'm sorry? Just, just building on that. Even though, even though the detail page doesn't go directly to d.org, the still be a link on that? Yeah, we're thinking about still having a link to go to Drupal.org if we don't present all the information. But we might just have links to like, I think if I, if I went back to the, this, the one that I had for the meta tag, which was the sample, like if you clicked on the issue link, that would go to Drupal.org. We're not replicating all the whole issue queue within the project browser. That'll be a link back to Drupal.org to get to the issue queue. Gotcha. Sorry for those of you who are on the call that missed the question. The question was, are we going to link from the project detail page out to Drupal.org to get additional information? And the answer is yes for things like the issue queue or some of the documentation that's added there, those type of things. Yes, we will. Um, any other questions? Go ahead. So you need logos for every freaking module? No, no. So the question is, do we need logos for every module? The answer is no. We would like them for the most popular modules, for the, like, the APIs and the modules that only get installed if you have this other module. No, we don't need logos. We have a, we have a default logo um, already. It's just an empty puzzle, blank puzzle piece. There is an issue out there that makes that a little bit nicer looking. Um, so yes, there will be a default, but we don't want them all to be defaults because that's not really, I mean, what would you do on Trivia Night if we didn't have logos to say which <laughs> module does the logo go with, right? Exactly. So we want, we want logos for the, the most popular modules, there but as a maintainer... Is there issue queue that kind of wraps up all the modules that need logos? Do we have a list, I'm oh, sorry, the question is do we have a list of all the modules that need logos? No. I started with the top 50. And we started getting logos for those. Um, the top 50 has changed, seeing that now Drupal 10 is the release that we're aiming for. The top 50 modules in Drupal 10 are not the same top 50 that were in 8 that we started with. So I need, I need to do some work to actually make that list. That's why I created those new um, meta issues for the logo in the description. And we'll start adding child issues to that for the most important modules. But as a maintainer, Maintainers might have somebody in their team that can do those. <laughs> they might, they might not. Um, mm -hmm. So reach out if you say, okay, these are my modules that I think need logos. Can you create child issues? And we definitely will create child issues for those. Okay. No? Are you a maintainer as well? No? Okay. No. All right. We also need to get this, the word out to the maintainers. Like, I put some things in the maintainer channel, but we haven't got a lot of traction. So 
anything that anybody here can help with how do we get more maintainers involved with this because the project browser as I said first impression is only as good as the content that we give to the people and we definitely don't want it to release it and have people say this is terrible the information that is given back is, is not helpful that's not what we want to do we want to make sure we're successful from the get-go go ahead uh, less about contributing more about the project browser thing on its own what happens if I want to add say four modules at the same time can I go in and say I want this one this one this one this one and then just let it go or do you have to in every single time pick one let it install pick the next one let it install pick the third one Right. So the question is, can you bulk install a set of modules where you select these four modules? I want to install all these. The answer to my knowledge right now, I didn't build this. The automatic initiatives package management team built that, that uh, back-end uh, coding. I believe the answer is no right now. If it's a recipe, right. so you can build a recipe. Right. And you can say, my recipe is for event management. And these are the 10 modules I need. You can build a recipe, and then you would get them all. But without that, no, you can't like bulk select. But that's a good question. Yes. If it reduces down to a composer command, you can, in fact, list a composer command that right. installs multiple things at once. Yep. Followed by a direct command that. Installs. Yep. So the comment is that in composer, you can, you know, add multiple modules to the one command to say I want to install these, you know, five modules, for instance. Definitely, we'll add that to. Uh, I can create an issue or you can create an issue for that saying, you know, have you thought about that? And we'll definitely add that. I can't say it's going to be MB MVP, but it could be something on the roadmap. And again, the more people we have helping and contributing, the, the more things like that we can get into the project browser. Anything else? All right, so I think we're pretty good on time. So thank you so much for coming. And I'll see you all on Sunday, maybe. All right, thank you.